Welcome to the Brain Pick a Pro Show, live from Lake Wiley's Wiley, South Carolina. How do you do, Mrs. Wiley? Wiley. <laughs> Lake Wiley, South Carolina, and all the way down in Alabama is my good friend, Zach Childress. I've known him hey. for many, many years. What's up, buddy? Hey, 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 man. I'm up here in the upper Alabama, not L.A. Let's get that clear. <laughs> <laughs> not lower Alabama, right? Not lower Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So, Zach, we've known each other for many, many years. I remember when you started out as a student, and now you're yep. teaching people how to do this stuff. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. You've come a long way, baby. <laughs> you know, man, it's been a fun run, and I've had a lot of great influencers in my life like you. Um, you know, we were just giggling about how, I don't know, 10 plus years ago, you came in with your ultimate buying and selling machine, and I was like, <laughs> you got to Amen. <laughs> I actually, it's funny. I've actually got a testimonial of you saying every every new acquisition manager we hire has to go through the ultimate buying and selling machine. <laughs> right. and, and I did. Right. I, did. I even had your websites back then. That's funny, man. That's yeah. funny. That's I back was, when our I was a Larry Goins machine, man. I was out there. <laughs> I, here's why. You know, it, it, it's so funny, Larry, because – you know, when you're on that journey to try to find your path as an investor and, and you right. know you need education, so you start, you know, traveling, going and, and to seminars and, and, and you're looking for people that you connect with, right? right. And, uh, right. and I had connected with you and obviously I had invested in, in myself by getting your training and then I went to your event. Um, but here's what I always say, like, there's a lot of things out there that just flat out don't work, Right. right. So, you know, that's why when I would gotten into your system and I went home and applied it, and that's the obviously one thing people don't do. Most right. They don't actually apply it. I, here's what I knew. I had read enough successful books and I'd been around some very high influential people at that time in my life. And one of the biggest takeaways I took wasn't that they studied everything. It wasn't that they read all the books. It was the fact that when they did get something, they consumed it and applied it to right. figure out if it was going to work or if it wasn't going to work so they could move on to something else. Well, I did that with yours and it worked. Surprise. <laughs> there you go. You know, it's, it's, it's like the students now. We both have students and, and they say, well, this doesn't work or that doesn't work. I'm like, well, how many offers did you make last week? Right. Well, right. I, I read right. this and I looked at right. that and I opened up this document, you know, well, let right. me ask you another question. How many offers did you make? Right. You know? So, yeah. So finally, I end up saying something like, so what you're telling me is you have a lot of education, but no application. <laughs> and perfect. Yeah, because my and, and, and I do the same thing, Larry. I'll say, well, look, you know, you got to make offers every week, and you got to actually pick up the phone and call people. How many people did you call? Well, I hadn't done that yet. Well, you know, it's not that it doesn't work. It's just you got to work the process. And um, and that was, you know, my big thing. I mean, I've got I, – I don't have book cases the size of yours <laughs> – <laughs> but you know, I've got Thank a lot you. of invested materials and, um, and look, let's be honest, not all of them worked. Um, but I don't regret any of it. Uh, I went through them. I applied them either. It didn't work for me or my personality or that strategy. I just didn't feel like was, you know, working at the, in the market at that time, but there's some things that will work over the test of time. Right. And in, in our camp and in our world now, we call them the four tiers, you know, which, it's nothing magical. It's not a loophole in the system. It's none of that. It is tier one wholesaling, tier two creative financing, tier three rehabbing, and tier four buy and hold. Like those four tiers will be, will, you can do them in any market cycle. You can do them in upswings, downswings, and they give you the ability to be more of a, um, uh, a transactional engineer, right? Uh, I know we were talking just the other day. We were at an event together, and I, and I was telling you how many rehabs I had. And you went, "Oh, I don't do rehabs." <laughs> <I> know, right? <laughs> but if you did them how I did them, and how I do it in my world, you'd probably do them. Right? Because you have a good team. I do, and I have what's called deal partners, and so like I have fourteen of them running right now. But I have the. I don't go to them. I don't manage the contractors. And in most cases, I don't even find them. But I come in with the, with the difference in the money that they need, that they're short. Right. And, you know, that, and that money's not coming out of my pocket. That money's coming from money I've raised from private investors. So I'm just raising that money, 
using it in those deals, but I get half. So I'm not a debt partner. I'm an equity partner. Right. So I get half of all the profits that are made on it. And, and that allows me to run multiple rehabs without having to have the headaches of contractors, without having to deal with the agents, without having to go out there all the time and check on it and see where we are. So That's really good, man. That's really good. I like that. So tell our listeners a little bit about Zach Childers, and I know you're doing rehab, but you got a lot of other stuff going on too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so who is Zach Childers? Well, they like to call me the Zach Attack. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, like I said, I'm in Alabama, I'm born and raised here, left here, went out to California. Well, I had a stint in Florida where I was a bartender, but then I went to California. That's where I got in real estate. So you're talking – 16 years ago, something like that. And um, I was, I was broke like most people, you know, I had credit score in the 500s. I had no money. I was living with the girlfriend's parents at the time. And, but there was something, man, there was something I went to, a, I call it the three day awakening. I went to this three day event um, back in the day held by the Whitney organization. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I just was listening. They were talking about, you don't have to have a license to do real estate. You don't have to have money in the bank to do this. You don't have to have great credit. And, I, and it was just a different way of look. Like I was told, obviously, you know, growing up, oh, get an agent, get a loan from a bank. Well, I couldn't do any of that. And so that really started my journey. I mean, honestly, that was where I saw it. And I said, it was weird. It was like, that, you know, you have those pivotal moments in your life. And I was sitting there in that three-day awakening. And, and as that Three day event was going on. I knew that was for me. Like I knew this was my journey. I knew, and it was weird, Larry, because not only did I know that I was going to do real estate, but I also knew that I was going to be teaching it one day. Didn't know how, didn't know when, didn't know where it was going to happen, but I could feel it. I could just, it was in my bones at that point. But I was fortunate. I was hungry. I was aggressive. Um, you know, you're talking 16 years ago. So we're talking 2002, right? And, um, so I was catching that upswing in the California market and you know, things just couldn't be any better at that time for me to get in, which is like what a lot of people are experiencing right now getting in, right? They're, they're catching that. And, um, and I just became a machine at wholesaling. I mean, I, that's what I did. I was wholesaling, wholesaling, wholesaling. And then it was very competitive in the California market. But I, I started doing a strategy called, which we now trademark and own the domain, co-wholesaling. <laughs> there you go. I couldn't compete with their marketing. And um, so I just started going to all these other wholesalers and I started saying, look, anything you can't sell, bring it to me. And all I did was focus on building my buyers list, just focus on building my buyers list. And then they started funneling me all these deals they couldn't do anything with. And I started selling those deals, taking half the, the assignment fee, half the assignment fee. And that really is what catapulted me into the industry as an investor because started building revenue. I started hiring people, building systems. And then not too long after that, I, I, I ran into you. And then that was when I actually started looking at virtual markets and I started putting systems together. And, um, and then I went from California to Dayton, Ohio. And then I, I started making money in Dayton, Ohio out of all places. Right. And I was like, Oh geez, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just branched out at one time I was wholesaling deals in 12 different States. Wow. That's awesome, man. I and love that it. was really where it took off, man. And um, and then like any like um, journey of an investor, as you educate yourself and you get the right help and you get the right training, um, you start evolving, right? Like I started as a wholesaler because that was all I could do. But then the next thing you knew, I knew I needed cash flow, but to stabilize the operation. But I couldn't get a loan from a bank because I had a 500 credit score. So I started right. moving into creative financing, doing lease options and subject twos and built up cash flow and then I then I was like man I'm gonna go do a rehab and then I got into rehabs and then I started taking those funds and I started buying apartments and um, and it just grew into what it is today and so you know now I own properties from California to Florida I own apartments strip malls warehouses commercial buildings I got rehabs all over the place I still wholesale I mean I just yesterday signed a contract for a subject to deal I mean so you know, I'm, I'm just in it, man. <laughs> That's sweet, man. Now, are you active in the business yourself or do you have a team? Or I, I have a team. We call them deal partners. Um, you know, we have acquisition processes. We have, um, 
you know, deal people. We have lead people. I mean, we, we kind of build it out to what it is. Um, I get, a, I have a lot of benefits because, um, you know, I'm the president of our local RIA. And so I get a ton of opportunities through there for people wanting to come work and learn and right. deal with flow through there. Um, that's the biggest reason I have the RIA, honestly, is um, is just the, the deals that come out of it. But, yeah, we have all of our little teams and lending departments and, and so forth that run. And, and mostly I, I push most of it all onto my deal partners and um, because <clears throat> that was where I saw that I could do more. Yeah, I'm only getting half of the deal, but I could do more, right? Because I don't just own an investment business. I own an education company. I own a software company. You know, I got my hands in quite a few things. And right. uh, if I was just going to do the investing business by itself, there's no way I could run, you know, 12 or 14 rehabs at a time. So sure. I saw it as beneficial. I also do funding in my market. So I've, I've moved even into the, you know, hard money aspect of things. And so evolution, baby, evolution. <laughs> you know what, Zach? And I think the most important part of that is, your business doesn't look anything like, and mine included, that it did when you first started out. The more you learn, the more you grow, and the older you get, you evolve into, you know, in, into doing what you want to do. And, you know, when you first start out, you have no cash, no credit, no experience, right? right, right. And that then once you start getting some experience and some credit and some cash, then you can do a lot more things. And then you start to think, well, how can I do this? with the experience and the money I have, but not as much of my own personal effort, right? Right, that's it. And that was the evolution over the last, I'd say four to five years of my life was, you know, and I got kids, you know, I got little kids, I got a six and a nine year old. And so, you know, I, I'm like, okay, well, why did I do all of this if I'm just gonna keep doing it? You know, like I needed to start taking steps back and like you said, like figuring out, how do I still make money on my knowledge and the resources I have available to me without me having to go put all my, my, my sweat equity into this stuff. And, uh, right. and that was a big shift, you know, almost six years ago that I made. And, and I'll be honest with you, you know, I, I love what I do. I mean, it's not like, I don't go, Oh, I gotta go do that. I love it. I love the investing side. I love the education side. Like I fell in love with the education side, with teaching people, writing books and courses and like sharing my experiences and the things that I've learned and what they brought right. me. Like, I love that. And so it's not work for me, but at the same time, I had to also remember, well, just because I love it doesn't mean I, I need to do it all the time. And right. so, right. and so I, I had to pull back from that as well. And, um, and just, you know, I mean, look, man, I'm, I'm blessed. <laughs> I'm so blessed. I mean, I'm the PTA president at my kid's school. <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, I'm the that is kind grade. of funny. <laughs> I do fourth grade um, part time youth ministry at my church, and my my daughter's in my class with me now. I coach, you know, baseball and soccer for the kids. I mean, right. I'm just able to have all of this love to the stuff going on with deals and business and. I'm, I'm able to do what I really set out to do, which is have the freedom, right? Like right. You, know, you build all this for a purpose, not to have another job. You build it for a freedom. But where I think a lot of students get the misconception is, is they think it's supposed to happen right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they think, oh, well, I, I invested in your course, but I'm not a millionaire in 90 days later. Well, well it don't work that way. You know, like right. you got to work it. You got to work it. You got to put the time in. You got to make the offers like we were talking about. You got to make the phone calls. You got to make the connections. You got to network. You got to build your team. You got to get your funding together. Like you got to work this thing. It's right. not going to fall in your lap. Now, don't get me wrong. There's shortcuts. I mean, you you teach people shortcuts. I teach people shortcuts. You know, there's technology that we didn't have back when we started that's available now, right, that um, really helps speed up the process. But, you know, let's face it, Larry. You know, I made a Facebook post about this yesterday. I was telling people, you know, like, look, if you're not understanding, you got to put work in and you got to keep educating you. I'm the wrong guy to listen to. I'm not going to tell you, oh, go get this and you'll be a millionaire in, in three months. It, that's right. not reality. No, <laughs> not at all. Not at it's all. not what they want to hear. I can tell you that. <laughs> it's it's not. And you know what, Zach? Some people 
are so lazy, you know, even if you give it to them, they won't go out and use it, right? I, no. I had a guy, I, I, I was looking for an, another boots on the ground guy, right? And, and most of our deals are within like an hour and a half of our office. So I put a post on Facebook, which is a great way to find boots on the ground. I don't care if you're in Las Vegas and you're looking for boots on the ground in Jackson, Mississippi. There's yep. Facebook groups in Jackson, Mississippi for real estate. You can find one. So this guy, he was like, man, I'll work for free. I just want to learn real estate. I'm pumped up about it. I'm excited. I want to quit my job. I, I, I want, I'll do whatever you want me to do. So I said, look, man, you, you don't need to work for free. I will pay you to put out signs, take pictures of houses and all that stuff, right? So he came by yesterday morning. He was all fired up. We gave him like 150 signs, right? He could have made $300 yesterday just putting out signs. This morning when we got to the office, we show up and the box of signs is sitting on the porch at the office. <laughs> he decided, oh, it's, this is too much work, <laughs> right? Putting out signs. Yeah, putting out signs. <laughs> and you know, I told him, I, I would even train you to be an acquisition manager eventually, but you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah, you know, I get it all the time too. I mean, I get them popping in my Facebook inbox. Hey, Zach, train me for free, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? When I first started, I fell for that trap, Larry. Oh, you and me both. You and me I both. I fell for that trap. I thought, you know what? You know what? Yeah, I'm an educator now. I'm going to do this. And I remember I would take people on and I would put all this time into them. Right. And all I would hear is excuses back. Oh, well, I can't. Oh, will this happen? Oh, will that happen? Or, oh, well, I'm like, I'm like, you're not doing anything I'm telling you to do. And I'm putting time in here. You know, right. and it was like deal splits. Like, I'm going to coach you and we're going to split deals. Right. And, um, so I learned the hard way on that one, man. Um, so yeah, I, I what I learned was is when people don't have an a vested interest in it, they Still. have no need. Yeah, they have no need to have an urgency to get it done. Right, they have no skin in the game. Right. You know that's funny. That's funny. You told that story. Um, I did the exact same thing. I'm thinking, okay, if I train you, you know, I was in the hard money business too. I'm like, you'll go out and do some deals. And you'll use me for hard money. And we'll partner on deals and stuff. And, and nobody did it. So I stopped training people for free. And then when I started telling people that, everybody would say, yeah, but I'm different. Yeah, but I'm different. Yeah, but I'm different. So I gave away a lot more free, free training. And how many of those people do you think ever did it? <laughs> <laughs> so now I tell that story anytime somebody says, you know, I, I tell the whole story so they can't say, yeah, but I'm different because I've been through that too, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. No, hey, I'm Zach, with you, Larry. Zach, tell us how your deal partners work. I know you got deal partners for rehab, for wholesaling, yep. for other stuff. Tell us how you, how you work. Well, I'll tell you, my, my most profitable model right now is my deal partners on my rehabs. And the reason I think it works so well is because, you know, we, we average somewhere around thirty to 35,000 profits. If we take all of our deals that have averaged them out, it's about thirty three, thirty four thousand. dollars 34000 which I get half of that. That's how the agreement works. I get half of it. Right. So how it all came to be was is I had a guy that was local, and he really wanted to get into some deals, but he was capital short. Right. He was just capital short. He was able to go to a bank or a hard money lender and get an initial purchase loan, but they wouldn't give him the down, wouldn't fund that or the construction cost. And so right. he came to me and, um, and was telling me what was going on. And I honestly, I didn't think he'd take the deal. Um, I was just like, I said, okay, well, how much is the down? He was like 15,000. I said, okay, how much is the construction cost? He was like 20. I said, so you need 35,000. He's like, yeah. I said, what's the profits on the deal? He's like 40. I said, I'll give you 35000 but I want half the profit. I, did, I thought he would be like, you're crazy. But he was like, no. Oh, he was like, okay, let's do it. Yeah, it's that or nothing. Right. And so, and I have, you know, I, I've been fortunate to raise private money for all these years. I mean, um, I'm an Alan Cowgill student from way back. <laughs> <laughs> the luncheons. <laughs> And so I would just go to these privates and I'd say, okay, hey, look, I need 35000 I, I I pay my privates anywhere from 6 to 10%. And then I would take it into the deal. 
you know, so that's annualized fees. So if I'm in the deal for, let's just say it's, you know, let's just say it's 12%. We'll just make math easy. It's 1% right. a month, right? right. I'm 35,000 and it takes four months to get the deal done. I mean, I'm only paying like $1,400 for the money. Sure. You know what I mean? So, and then it sells and I'm getting my 35 back to pay the private off. Plus I'm putting 20 in my pocket. I'm like, this was a good deal. And I did, I didn't find the deal. I didn't manage the deal. I didn't go out and swing hammers and any of that stuff. And, um, right. I said, man, I need to do more of these. Like, this is the way to go because now I had the freedom to do what I wanted. I wasn't stuck on a rehab, right? I wasn't stuck in the middle of it. I just needed right. to focus on raising private money and um, and really building that infrastructure. And, and now I have seven people locally I do it with. Um, and they go and they find them. And, and look, it's kind of a scratch your back, scratch my back because as I I, as I get deals too, I mean, if it's a wholesale deal, we just do it in house. If it's a, you know, if it's a rental portfolio property, we do it in house, but if it's a rehab, I will take one. I, I kind of round robin them, you know, I'll throw one over to this guy, throw one to this guy, throw one to this guy, yeah, yeah. you know, so I feed them, they feed me and you know, they're getting deals that they wouldn't normally have. And, um, it has been an absolute, blessing man i mean it, when, when i say i teach people how to do rehabbing made easy like i teach rehabbing made easy <laughs> like, this is how you do it the easy way right that's right well, you don't do find, any. <laughs> find the money and then let it let it run <laughs> that's good man i love it i love it so what's next for zach you know, I'm moving more and more into commercial. I mean, that's kind of where I've been. I, I sold off all my single family resident rentals. Um, I still hold my fourplexes. I, I still hold the, you know, office space, warehouse space and commercial buildings. But it's just moving more into commercial, you know, for that long term strategy. I'll, I'll always rehab and I'll always wholesale because they kind of go hand in hand. Um, right. You know, but. For me, long term is just keep moving into bigger commercial, bigger commercial, bigger commercial. So that's good. I just, that's good. I just like it. I like that commercial model too because you can put them on triple nets and like you're done. Like mean, they cover everything at that point. Um, but I, I, it's been kind of slow right now because, as you know, I mean the market is extremely hot right now and prices are like out of the roof. Right. And. Um, so I'm just kind of waiting. I mean, we're seeing the market starting to make some shifts already. Uh, we're seeing some prices in, in certain markets starting to stabilize, and we're seeing foreclosures on, on creeping up already. And so I think it's signs. I think, I mean, I, I'm not making a bold prediction, but I think we've probably got another 24 months before we start to see some some real corrections that the general public can feel. Right. There's going to be some inflation. There's going to be some interest rates going up and some inflation. It's yeah. got to be. Oh, absolutely. And and I honestly, Larry, I'm excited for it. I mean, because, you know, I'm made, if you look at the bulk of my wealth, it, it was made during that downturn in the market. That's where I made it. I mean, I was, I was buying houses in California for $80,000 that I'm selling 10 years later for 350,000. Wow. That's huge. Yeah. Because I was smart enough to listen to a mentor back then that said, don't be scared of this market. Buy, right. buy in this market, put a renter in it and sit on that property until it turns again. And I was just dumb enough to listen to him. And, and, and he was right. I mean, I bought a ton of them at that time out in California, up in the Bay Area, Vallejo, Fairfield, Vacaville market up in there. And, um, right. you know, I was buying them for 80000 I was renting them for 1600 a month. <laughs> you know, because these houses were, well, that's what they rented for. I was just getting them there because of all the foreclosures that had came up. And, right, um, right. and then my agent, I don't know, I guess it was towards the end of last year, he called me up that, that I do business with out there. And he's like, Zach, you probably need to start selling some of these houses out here. I was like, wow. Like, I didn't think they had went up that much, you know? Right. I said, well, what are these four properties at now? And he came back and they were between 325 and 375. And I was like, sell them. <laughs> I was right. like, sell them. Sell them. Right. Here's the, here's a funny one for you. One of them I sold at the end of last year was a house that I put the deal together and contracted it at your event. Really? 
Yes, at your event and um, oh man, I where was I think it was the same one that I shot the video at. Um, the Twifers oh. were there. Um, anyways, and I was working that deal in the back of the room. I was there with a friend of mine, um, uh, Abe, and um, you had the two girls working for you back then too, and. Um, yeah. And um, and I put that deal together, and the guy who was wholesaling it to me almost backed out on the deal, and I was in my hotel room just giving him an earful, like why he couldn't back out on me, <laughs> and he ended up not backing out on me. Um, and I and I, I closed that deal, and I sold it at the end of last year for three hundred fifty thousand. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And you know, really good point you mentioned. You know about the guy backing out of the deal. Real estate is a sales business, man. You, you've got to be a good negotiator, salesperson, because sometimes you have to renegotiate the deal. Sometimes you have to resell the seller. You have to resell your buyer. You got to sell the realtor on presenting your offer. You got to sell the appraiser to get you the number you want. You got to sell the lender to lend you the money, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because what happened with that deal is um, Thomas was his name. I still remember the guy. Um, he realized the cash flow potential that was going to come off of that. And that's why he was like, Oh, I'm just going to go buy it. I'm like, well, man, we're already in an agreement. I've already given you money. Like I'm in contract. Like you right, can't do right. this. And, and, and you know, I'll put a little guilt trip on him. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, man. That's good. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. So but think so about it. If I'd have lost that deal, I'd have lost a quarter of a million dollars, you know? Yeah. Yeah, just on that one deal. Just on that one deal. Just on that one deal. And, you know, uh, Zach, I love the cheap houses, right? Yep. I mean, I know you guys got a cheap house or two in Alabama. Look, uh, I just I just wrote a contract for a subject, too, yesterday on a house for the loan on it was like 21000 something like that. So. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, I love it. We're buying a lot of houses for five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And we're wholesaling those for ten or fifteen thousand dollar profit, uh, or seller financing them. Right? We just right. bought a package of six houses in Lancaster, South Carolina, for thirty five thousand for all six, and they're bringing in twenty one hundred a month. <laughs> you can't beat that, right? <laughs> <laughs> you make me want to go back into single families. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's awesome, man. It's good. It's good. So uh, what does your team look like? I know you have mostly deal partners, but do you have people, do you have any people in house or do you just work yeah. with all deal partners? No, we have, uh, we have people in house that deal with it, but they're all part time because most of them are out in the field looking at deals. Right. So, right. Um, uh, but most of our, most of my real estate team actually works from home. I right. mean, that's what they do. Like I have, you know, like for instance, um, one of my deal partners, his wife is an, is the acquisition side of, of that organization, right? And right. so, you know, and then um, I have another deal partner and then I've trained his assistant to be acquisitions. And, you know, so we really, I've really said, look, you know, I don't need it all under, under this roof. I don't need to come in and hear about, you know, who had a bad night, who got a bellyache. I don't need to hear that, right? So, um because I run it the way I run it, which is deal partners, 50, 50 splits. I don't have to worry about them so much if they're doing it or not doing it. You know, I manage everything through like a Google doc aspect on per deal. And, and, you know, and I have meetings. I mean, we meet every Monday, we meet every Friday and, um, and they meet on the job sites with the crews Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, the acquisition people, I, I'm, I, always work with them on like their marketing, their communication, because that's really where I'm able to kind of give a little bit of an extra to them because they don't have the experience that I have. So, you know, they'll come in the office with their team and we'll sit down and we'll talk and we'll go over like, okay, here's how that lead needs to be worked. Or they'll come in and, you know, they'll say, okay, we're looking at these 15 leads and, and I'll go through them with them and say, okay, you need to scrap these 10, work these five. Here's why, here's what you need to say. So I'm always educating them. I mean, you could call it like coaching, but it's really, um, I'm building the team inside right. of the partnerships that I have because each deal partnership that I have, we have companies set up with each one of them. So I'm, I'm in the company with them. So it's in my best interest to get them trained and help them build that organization in each one of these little groups. 
That's really good. Man. I like the way you've done it because you set it up to where it's not labor in, labor intensive for you. Right. Yeah, it's not. I bring the money and I have meetings. That's good, man. That's good, man. So give, give us your number one tip for raising money. My number one tip for raising money. Hmm. Know your intent statement is always a plus. I have, um, uh, there's hardly ever a time that I'm not talking to people about what they're doing with their money. It's just second nature to me. So right. if it's, I don't know if it's so much as the tip as it is a, as, as something internally. And, and I share this with people. I say to them all the time, look, if you knew you could borrow a million dollars today and in six months turn it into five million, would you be asking everybody for a million dollars? Yes, 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 I would. So why aren't you asking for it now? Well, I don't know. It's because you don't have the confidence yet. Right. They don't ask for money because they don't have the confidence that they can execute the money necessary. So that goes back to getting the right training and, and, and implementing. But once that's in place, it's build the confidence, start asking for the money. But when I first started, when I very first started, where I think I had my most success with raising private money is I went to an equity trust conference. Um, I would go out to equity trust conference, which as you and I both know, it's a room full of private investors in most cases, right? Right. And I just would go out and start networking with them. And then, and then, that's, then after that was when I met our good friend, Alan, and I started doing marketing. I started holding my own luncheon. And um, we just did one in South Florida, me and D.C. We did some marketing. And we, did, we raised like uh, it was 12, 12 or $13 million from one lunch. Wow. That's just bringing them in, letting them eat, and doing an hour presentation on your business and what you can do. And so – now, I will, I'm going to drop a little one on you right here right now. This will be the first time I've told anybody this, but we just uh, partnered up with a hedge fund manager, and we're going to build our own capital fund. So next year, um, we're going to launch that. So we're going to actually become hard money investors to our students. That's really good. That's really good. We're doing some of that now. You've done that for a long time, though, haven't you? Well, I've been in the hard money business for years, many years. Uh, but what we used to do is we used to use other people's money and yeah. they would get the interest and we would get the points, right? But That's fortunately, true. we've been doing it long enough now where we just use our own money. We don't use other people's money anymore and we just loan it out so we get the points and the interest. Yeah, and that's kind of what we're looking at. Like, he's coming over. He has a very successful um, uh, fund that he manages for the stock industry. And he's coming over because he's got a lot of stock people that want to diversify their money. So he, we've been talking for like, like eight to nine months now. And um, right. so he's bringing funds in. We're bringing funds in. We'll probably still raise some funds, too. Um, but, yeah, so that, I mean, that's the same angle we're going to take on it. It's just, well, we're using the fund for two purposes. Number one, to be able to be a funder to our students in-house. And right. number two, to go after bigger commercials. There you go. That's good, man. Yeah, just to go buy bigger stuff. That's good stuff, Zach. It really is. So uh, anybody can make it. They just got to take action, right? I can, I can make it from Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I love it. That's funny. So, uh, Zach, if people wanted to reach out to you, if they wanted to connect with you, how would they uh, find out more info about you? Man, right there. Right there. Right there. <laughs> right there, right there. Right there. Um, that's the best way to kind of understand who we are and what we do. It's called My First Deal Playbook. Um, they can go to myfirstdealplaybook.com. Um, we give the book away. We just ask them to pay for the shipping. Um, it's the easiest way to to um, just kind of know a little bit more about what we do, our theory of how we teach. Um, right. You know, we do a live Facebook show every Tuesday, kind of like, you know, what you guys do over there. I mean, that's right. a good place if they're just looking to jump on somewhere and just kind of get some questions to some real estate. Um, so, I mean, we're all there. Zach Childers dash REI Success Academy. That's on Facebook. Um, tons mm -hmm. of free information on there. And if you want to understand our theory of training and how, we get people to understand like how to get their first deal and what is market segmentation and how to step all that into place. It's uh, my first deal playbook.com. That's good, man. Zach, I really, really appreciate you being on. This has been some good stuff. Cool, man. I'm it's, glad we connected again. 
Yeah, me too. Inspiring, motivation, all that cool stuff. And Zach, what day is your uh, is your live Facebook broadcast? It's on Tuesday, right? We do it every Tuesday at one thirty Eastern time zone. Okay, good, good, good. One thirty, and um, it's um, like I said, it's Zach Childress Dash REI Success Academy. They'll they'll find it and jump on there. I mean, that's all we do, man. We 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 just throw it out there. We're either on there for 30 minutes or to an hour. It depends on how many questions we get, or sometimes it's the topic. You know, I get really passionate about certain topics and sure. you know, I can go on and on and on. So that's good stuff, man. I really appreciate you being on. This has been awesome. Go cool, Larry. Well, I good <laughs> seeing you, man. You it's too, man. Fun. Take care. All right, buddy. All right. Thanks. 